to stay in the air, especially if the temperatures are really, really hot. Um, certain times of the day, uh, people can't be around, say, certain flowers or cut grass or certain things, you know, that are triggers. So if they know they're known triggers, to stay away from it. Also, sometimes people, um, even indoors, um, explain to a patient about having air purifiers, also taking up the carpet, not having carpet in the house. Even if you don't have pets in the house, sometimes just the carpet alone traps a lot of dust and a lot of dirt and things that uh, will trigger this type of situation. So just some preventative things that they can go over. Um, I'm not worried about that slide. Now, other treatment as far as medications. Oxygen therapy, yes, that would be number one, especially if this patient is extremely depleted of oxygen um, and obviously in an um, attack situation. Uh, small volume nebulizers, and these nebulizers could be oxygen or air. Okay, so with nebulizers, it could be oxygen or air, and that is there obviously to help uh, open up the airway and airflow. Yep. This also exactly. like inhalers. It's like a it's like an inhaler. So we have nebulizers and yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, ne um, yes, it is an inhaler. It is an inhaler. I was thinking of another, there's another term they use for it. Maybe it's just inhaler. Inhaler nebulizers. So most of the times it could be either air or oxygen. And another thing too, and I remember. Um, because one time I was diagnosed with what they called stress-induced asthma, I don't know, and they gave me an inhaler. And sometimes I remember the doctor explaining to me that um, I could pre-treat. So you can use the inhaler before you go out or going somewhere where you're going to be doing whatever type of activity, you know, uh, so you don't have to wait till that actual attack happens. So I don't know if they still recommend that. Now, B2 agonist, yes? I have a question. <coughs> He lives now, he doesn't have to use his inhaler at all. And it's um, more humid out there. Is that because the air is more moist? Yeah. Where, where does he live? He lives, like, um, in Hawaii. Okay. Yeah, some parts of... Yeah, because of the humidity, I think it helps. I'm not sure the whole physiology behind that, but I have heard of people moving... I don't know about Hawaii, but I've heard of people moving to like Florida and they don't have any sinus problems and no asthma, you know, it, like those problems do go away when they move, move to more humid type climates. Yeah, because when he comes back out here, he has to be Yeah, it. it's not humid over here. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's definitely more humid on the East Coast, especially the South, Southeast. Yeah, I've heard of that. That's not the first time I've heard of it. I don't know the full physiology behind it, but it is something to do with the humidity. Now, B2 agonist, yes? No, I was just going to add to it. My, my mom, she has horrible asthma, like, all the time. But um, she, you can, it's funny because you can always tell when you're talking about humidity. You can tell when it's going to rain. But she'll have, like, slight oh, symptoms yeah. and then not, like, never fails. Within a day or two, it's going to rain. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's funny because they can't be around extreme heat either. It's like, like the jump in the weather, yeah. it's like you can only, it's horrible for I mean, aside from she's allergic to a ton of stuff on the sun, but. Yeah. And that's another thing, too. People that have a lot of allergies, there are, I don't want to say it's like automatic that they're going to have asthma, but it's a very high chance that they're going to have asthma. So, that is sometimes go hand in hand. Okay, now B2 agonists. B2 agonists, just so that you know, these are used as a bronchodilator. So B2 agonists are used as a bronchodilator. That's the other word I was looking for. So we have nebulizers and bronchodilators. And then corticosteroids, what they do, they relax the airway. Okay, corticosteroids relax the airway. Now, corticosteroids, you know, are used for a number of things, and especially people that do get the cortisone injections, okay, for muscle pain and things of that nature. What it does is just to relax and calm, okay, the muscle contraction down. Same situation here. It's supposed to calm down that bronchospasm that they're having and just relax it and open up the airway. Um, leukotriene modifiers and mast cell inhibitors. What do you think these two are going to do? 
So leukotriene modifiers and mast cell inhibitors. Very good. They're going to decrease the inflammation. Okay, so these two things are going to decrease the inflammatory process. So three main things that I want you to understand with treatment. Number one, give them oxygen if they need it. Number two is to open up that airway. Okay, so you have to open up that airway by whatever means, nebulizers, or bronchodilate, whatever it is. So open up the airway. And then the last thing is to decrease the inflammatory process. Okay, so three things. Give them oxygen, number one. Number two, open up that airway. And number three is to decrease the inflammation. And this picture here just gives you a nice little, another little diagram just showing you with the uh, inflammatory mediators and what happens. So you can look at that at home. It's not a big deal. Okay. If you don't mind, I need to take a break because I just need to get some water and I'll just get it dry for some reason. Can you stop? And then we'll come back and finish up with the acute bronchitis.